for most systems, it's a good idea to feed to the younger parity and not the average feed intake because you're really hurting the younger gilts. And those are the gilts that this is the future of your sow farm. So you you want them to breed back fast. You don't, you don't want them to lose a lot of body condition um, compared to a sow that can eat 15 percent more. She can she can be all right. So I think. Not using the average of a sow farm for feed intake, I think is important and then formulate to a higher lysine level using synthetics and not using as much. Uh, soybean meal is really an, an area of opportunity. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Casey Neal, a swine nutritionist for Carthage Veterinary Services. So Casey, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Sure. Thanks, Clayton, for the invitation. Happy to to join you. It's always nice to see you and and talk with you. Uh, My background, um, I grew up on a farm in Kansas. Uh, My dad had about 50 sows all outside, so got to learn to feed sows with a five-gallon bucket and and run for your life (laughs) Um, and learn how to castrate at 30 pounds. But um, learned a lot in 4-H and FFA with pigs and knew that I wanted to learn more. And so um, after high school, I went to a community college here in Kansas and then to Kansas State University and got my master's in swine nutrition and then moved to Minnesota and worked for Christensen Farms and then moved to Tennessee and worked for PIC as their nutritionist. And then for eight and a half years, I worked for Pipestone as a nutritionist and now the last two years i have been with carthage uh, doing nutrition for uh, clients so as a consultant working with independent producers they may have sows maybe fair to finish Um, they may be getting wing pigs in and helping them with their nutrition most of them have their own farm feed mills and use their own grains and so help help those independent producers with their diets Awesome. So today I wanted to talk about sow and piglet nutrition. So though both of these topics are about feeding pigs in very different stages of production, they obviously share a common goal, which is getting those pigs off to as good of a start as possible. So to start, let's do a bit of a checkup, if you will. How are we doing as an industry when it comes to sow nutrition? Are we keeping up with her nutritional needs? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, When I'm out working with producers, I see a wide range of sow nutrition and formulation. And I do think there's some possibilities of improving the sow nutrition, mainly on the lactation diet. These sows are producing a lot of pigs. They're producing a lot of milk. um, And we got to get them bred back as well. So we're asking a lot from these females. And I think The lactation diet is an area that we really need to focus on. When I was at PIC and working on the nutrition recommendations, a lot of that research was done with Dr. Laura Greiner at Carthage, um, being able to look at a commercial research sow farm and look at the requirements of a sow. And that has really helped, I think, the industry. I think when that research came out, we really took a step forward. Um, But I also think there's room for opportunity, not only from the nutrient spec standpoint, but formulation. We can talk about how much lact- how much lysine they need, how much energy, calcium, and phosphorus, but just as important is the formulation structure of the diet. Knowing how to formulate that diet so the sow will eat it, so the gilts will eat it, I think is very important too. So not only is the nutrient specs, I think, an area of opportunity for a lot of producers, but then the formulation on how to meet those specs are very important as well. Awesome. So going on that topic of lactation formulation, when it comes to feeding a sow, obviously we want to increase her feed intake as much as possible in order to increase the amount that nutrients are absorbed. So she then produces more milk for those piglets to consume. But there's it's more complex than just simply getting her to eat more. So when it comes to formulating lactation diets, what do you think we need to pay more attention to? Sure. 
I think the weather has, or the season has a, a big factor on how those diets are formulated. Obviously in the summer, it's warmer out. And so usually intake drops. I know with a lot of systems, if you look at the winter lactation feed intake versus the summer month lactation feed intake, there could be a half a pound to a pound a day of less intake in the summer months. And so not only do we need to increase energy, but we also need to increase the amino acids to make sure she's producing enough milk to supply her litter, but also to breed back. And so I think looking at how much added fat in the diet, because I think there is kind of a level where you can add too much fat. I know depending on on the country and, and even part of the U.S., um, there's some places where they need to feed higher energy diets, a lot of fat. And other places, you may be able to feed maybe a little bit less fat um, in the northern states, um, even in the summertime. But I think there is kind of a sweet spot there where um, you could feed a higher level of fat without hurting intake. Sometimes when you add a lot of fat, that can decrease uh, feed intake a little bit, uh, just like it does in finishing pigs. So making sure you're using the correct level of fat and then also the amino acids making sure from a formulation standpoint, you're using synthetic amino acids um, because soybean meal, it seems like with some research that's been done over the last couple of years, too much soybean meal can actually hurt intake. So again, how you formulate that diet, we want a higher lysine lactation diet, but if there's a lot of soybean meal in that diet over 30%, for example, you will see a decrease in feed intake, especially in those younger parodies. And that's the one, that's the parodies you're focusing on, the gilts, the P1s, the P2s. That's where they have about 10 to 15% lower feed intake on average compared to a sow. And so a lot of the systems are feeding to the average, um, whereas the younger parodies are, are eating less. And so that's another area of focus as far as looking at what can we do to improve on? I think for most systems, it's a good idea to feed to the younger parity and not the average feed intake because you're really hurting the younger gilts. And those are the gilts that this is the future of your sow farm. So you you want them to breed back fast. You don't, you don't want them to lose a lot of body condition um, compared to a sow that can eat 15% more. She can, she can be all right. So I think not using the average of a sow farm for feed intake, I think is important. And then formulate to a higher lysine level using synthetics and not using as much uh, soybean meal is really an, an area of opportunity. Gotcha. So then going on down the timeline in terms of stage of production. So now we have those pigs during weaning and we're trying to start them on feed. And I know some people say that starting nursery pigs on feed can be really difficult. And it is a very critical window, um, especially with all the stress they're experiencing and trying to help their immune systems be prepared for the, that stress in this new environment. So I guess what tips and tricks would you have for people who have a hard time trying to start off those nursery pigs on feed? Yeah, that's a good question. You do hear a lot of of information out there of of the newer genetics not being able to start on feed very well and more fall behinds and things like that. Um, and this is an area that I really get excited about. I really like nursery nutrition. Um, I like the challenge of trying to put a, a diet together and formulate it correctly and getting these wean pigs off uh, to, uh, to a good start. I know Dr. Dean Boyd has helped me out a lot. Um, when I was at PIC, I used to go, go and see Dean in, uh, Franklin, Kentucky. And, and one thing he taught me was the most important diet in a pig's life is the first nursery diet. The second most important diet in a pig's life is the second nursery diet. And then the third most important diet in a pig's life is the lactation diet. So, I think the topics today of sow nutrition and nursery nutrition uh, go hand in hand. Um, Dr. Dean Boyd taught me that. And really, I think there is some opportunity on nursery nutrition. I don't think it's 
it's all genetics. I don't think it's all um, health and other things. I think how we feed these pigs to get them started is very important. I think helping with the higher lactose levels, cutting back crude protein, I think are very important items to look at. And then the type of ingredients that you use to meet those specs are very important. Um, there's a lot of different lactose sources like whey, sugar, some other ingredients like that that can really help. I do believe in steamrolled oats. I do like rolled oats for a lot of reasons. One is it seems to help prevent some looseness in those pigs. And so I think using the correct lactose source, maybe like a sugar type ingredient versus a traditional whey is an opportunity to help increase intake and get those pigs started on feed as well as transitioning those pigs from phase one to phase two and phase three. Uh, um, I think that's an opportunity really when you go from phase one to phase two, you don't change ingredients too much because that'll cause pigs to go off feed and kind of have to restart them. And so I think a smooth transition from phase to phase is also a key area to look at. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Final question I have for you is when talking about the feed form for nursery pigs, I've done mash, I've done pellets, I've done crumble. So when looking at these different feed forms for nursery pigs, what would you suggest in different circumstances or what tips or tricks would you have for those people um, who are looking at possibly doing one feed form versus another? Yeah. So I think with some research that, that we've done over the last year or two, as well as some um, field trials, I do think a meal crumble feed form in the nursery diet seems to work pretty good. Um, I think those pigs seem to, to take after the crumble and meal component very well. That also gives you an opportunity to, to use steamrolled oats that we talked about um, versus maybe a pellet. You can't really get, you'll have to use ground oats. And I don't think you get the same response with ground oats as you do with flaked oats. I work with a lot of independent producers that make their own nursery feed on farm and so being able to have a base mix that flows is very, very important. And so that crumble form actually helps um, the feed flow, not only in the feed mill, but also in the barn as well. Um, we do seem to see a, less scours on a, on a crumble meal diet compared to a pelleted diet. Even when it's the same formulation, same ingredients, the only difference is feed type. Um, and so I think a crumble meal diet, being able to use some other ingredients as well as feed flow and feeder adjustments, I think are uh, some reasons uh, that a crumble meal diet has worked well, at least in our situation. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Casey, for coming on the show and sharing all your advice with us. Yes, sir. Well, thank you. Appreciate the invitation. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.